So till this point, we got our container ready and then we also have a jar ready. You just have to copy this jar and put that in the container. How will you do that? Okay, let's go back to container first and we were doing that in the command line. So either you can do it in a command line or you can do it in the, of course, in the terminal, but of IntelliJ itself so that we are in the same path. Okay, so first of all, I want to stop this. I will stop this con uh, currently running jar. And now, okay, the mic is coming in between. So what I will do is I will open my terminal again and let's play it out. Now, this is where I will put some command. The command I want to run is this. I want to check what are the processes are running for Docker. And you can see there's one process running. It's still up and running. And in this thing, we want to check the file system. Now, if you see your JDK installation, it will have multiple folders. Now, one of the folder we have to use is temp. So what we can do is we can use Docker execute. Now we want to execute a command inside the container. And I want to see, let's say all the files, all the system, all the files here. So I can specify docker exe and then I have to mention the container ID or container name will also work. So you can see we got this weird name here, gifted uh, lbacan. So I will just paste it. And then I have to come pass a command here. Now which command I want to pass? I want to pass ls hyphen a. So it will list all the folders of JDK. So you can see uh, this is the folders where you have inside JDK. You got bin. And if you go inside bin, you will see Java compiler there or Java C. But one of the folder which we can use here is temporary or user. It's your choice. I will be using temporary here. So how do we know what is inside the temporary? Uh, so instead of passing ls hyphen a, we can pass ls slash temp. And when you say enter, you can see in this particular folder, temp, we only have one folder. Anyway, we, we are not concerned about that folder. What we want to do is we want to take our jar file, which is there inside this target. So you can see the jar file is here. I want to take this jar file and put this in the container. How will you do that? And for that, we just have to pass a command. So what's a command? So you have to say Docker. I'll just clear this screen so that it will come on top and just give some more space here. So I will say Docker. Now what we want to do is we want to copy, right? So for copy, we have to pass a command called CP, which is copy. Then you have to mention what you want to copy. So we want to copy. So we are in this REST demo in the folder itself. Uh, the project folder and inside this we have a target folder inside target we have this file which is called rest demo dot jar now this is the file we want to copy but where we want to copy this inside the temp folder so mention your container name which is gifted underscore something and then give a colon and then mention inside this container i want to copy this inside temp so i will say enter you can see it says copied now, how do I verify that it is really copied? Again, we can run the old command, which is docker execute uh, container name ls slash temp. It will tell you that there are two folders. One was there already, and we got one more file, which is rest demo.jar. Copying is done. Okay, now we got a container. Inside this container, now we have two things. So this is J the container where you are running your JDK, and also you got your file. Now, if you want to give this to your colleague or someone or to run this on a production, we can't simply give them the container, right? We have to give them an, an image. So how do you create an image of this container now? So to create the image, we have to use something called commit. So when you have to say docker commit, so commit is something which will create an image for you. So you have to say docker commit. And then you have to mention, you want to create image of which or what? So you have to mention the container. So the container name is this gifted and then you have to pass one more thing, which is the image name. So what the name of your image you want. So I want the image name to be Telisco rest demo. And then I want to give a tag as well. So let's say this is my version one, which I want to say V1. Of course you can use any name, doesn't matter. So I want to say V1. And when you say enter, it will still not work. You know why? It's because you have a container, right? Now in this container, you have a JDK. So by default, even if you run this image, it will give you JShell because that is by default configured. Let me show you. So I will say enter. We got the image ready. Uh, let me see if the image is there. So I will say images. And you can see we got two images now. One, we got it from the registry. Second, which we created. I want to use this image. How do I run this? So you have to say Docker, run. And then you can mention the, your image name, which is uh, rest 
demo and then, then the tag, which is v1. And when you say enter now, so you can say it is running JShell. We don't want to run JShell, <laughs> we want to run our project. Now, why this happening is because if you see uh, the default command for the container, so if I say docker ps, the default command for container is jshell. We don't want this to be a default command. I mean, we don't want to run this. Okay, how do we achieve that? So let's create, let's pass the same thing. This time we'll say version two. And when you create the image, you can pass the command itself. Now, how do you pass a command? So to pass a command, we have to use cmd, but to make it happen, you have to pass an option called change. So to say change equal to cmd, which is the value, so I will put that in semicolon or single quote. Now in this, you have to pass a command. So what's the command you want to run? Now, how do you run a jar file? We have seen that before, right? You have to say java hyphen jar, and then you have to mention the name of the jar. The same thing here, but you can't simply pass a command just like java hyphen jar, and uh, the file name. What you have to do is you have to put this in double quotes. So put everything in double quotes as the array values. So you have to pass three values for the command itself. So if, you, if, if the command is of four words, you have to put four, uh, four double quotes. Okay, and now we have to pass one more thing, which is a file name, which is the inside temp, which is rest demo dot jar. That means when you run this particular container uh, the image now, it will run this particular command. And let's see if this works, okay? There's no problem. Now, if I try to run this, but you have to make sure that you're running v2 because v1 was just default. We changed something with uh, in the v2 version. Enter, hey, it's running. You can say it's running. So it's running on 8081. So let's see if this works. I will go back to my browser and refresh. Oh, it's not running. What's wrong? See, the thing is, Docker, it's, they, Docker itself, the Docker container has everything. It has the uh, running softwares. It also has its own networking. It also has its own volume. So when you are saying that it's running on port number 8081, it's actually running on 8081 of the Docker network, not of the machine network. So machine has a different, different network. The Docker has a different network. So how do we expose it? So to expose it, what we have to do is, let's clear this. So to expose, we have to run one more thing. You have to specify the port number, P, that the Docker port will be running on the machine port of 881. So whatever Docker port you have, the container port will be exposed with the system port on the same number. You can change the number as well, but let's keep it default, the same, same numbers. And now if you say enter, so basically we are giving the port number as well now, so that it will be exposed to the outside world of Docker, which is my machine. And it says it is running. Let's verify and run. And we got hello world. We are running this inside a Docker container. Now let's say if I want to give this project to run, I can simply give you this container, the image. I can push this image to the Docker hub. You can get this image and run, it will work. That's the beauty of Docker, and it will work on any, anywhere, it doesn't matter, right? So that's the beauty about Docker and the running your images or running your application on Docker.